Hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama, I'm your basic queer bitch, and I'm here to explain you all the references about Drag Race España Season 3. Vamos a ver, hija, pero vamos a ver. So welcome to my rant, I mean review. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all these people that sent me PayPal last week, you guys are amazing. If you want to support my channel, remember that you have that information down below. And if you want a free way to support my channel, remember that you can share, comment, like, subscribe, all of those beautiful things. So this week's episode is The Rusical, and they decided to do a version of The Wizard of Oz called El Mago Precoz. I'll get into that a little bit later, but we're going to start with the new day in the workroom. There's a beautiful moment with Paquita crying because she sent home Macarena, and as I told you, they've known each other forever. They're good friends, so I thought that was super cute. And then uh, Supreme comes and they start opening some presents that they have on the table. And those are like little gifts that their loved ones sent just to, you know, encourage them a little bit. So this is just a cute moment. I think we were all crying, especially when they were talking about like grandmas and stuff. But uh, if you need a couple of references there, just very briefly, they sent Paquita uh, Manton from her mom and a couple of garments of things that you wear in Semana Santa. Her brotherhood is called San Gonzalo. So every Easter she dresses up like this. This has absolutely nothing to do with the KKK, you guys, okay? The US is not the center of the universe. This has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Calm down. So this is her brotherhood and then El Manton. Ornella got presents that represented her like drag cabaret family, which is called Agogo Cabaret. Pinchadora got a book from her husband. As I explained, he's a poet and his name is Angelo Nestore. Clover got chocolate and a very beautiful handwritten letter from her family. Bestia got a little drawing of her boyfriend and her dog. Pitita and Vania got plushy animals that reminded them of their grandmas. And Visa gets candy from her boyfriend. She has a boyfriend. And she talks a little bit about how lonely it is being an immigrant. Then they let them know that this week is going to be the Rusical. And instead of choosing the characters themselves, they decide to do like auditions to select each role. And this is obviously a complete farce. They all knew who was going to play which character. But I thought it was like the funniest bit about the episode. It was very like lighthearted and it was very nice because we were all crying after all the gifts and all the grandma and daddy is proud of you and all that talk. So I thought that was a clever way of explaining that uh, we're going to put in whichever role whoever we think deserves it and make it funny, like creating content, creating like iconic moments. So good idea. The guest judge this week is Monica Cruz. And if she reminds you of Penelope Cruz, that's because it's her sister. She was very popular in Spanish TV. She did a couple of like TV shows that were musicals and yeah, I didn't think she was like the most amazing guest judge that we've had. So I'm going to explain briefly the Rusical and I'm going to explain briefly the runway. And then we're going to go queen by queen explaining how they did in both things all together. The Rusical is called El Mago Precoz, which is obviously based on The Wizard of Oz. El Mago Precoz would be like the premature wizard. And when we say Precoz, that type of premature in Spanish, we mean that they finish prematurely. So it's like that is the connotation. Of course, we have to make like sexual jokes. And it is the Wizard of Oz, but it's also based in La Movida. La Movida, like the, you could translate that with like the scene, was a counterculture movement uh, in Madrid, specifically in the 80s, okay? In 1975, 
Franco dies, so there's like a transition from our dictatorship to democracy, and like people really wanted more. So La Movida was this huge cultural movement. You have to think of it as like, like synth pop, glam punk movement. And a lot of very famous people come from there. Like for example, Pedro Almodóvar, our most famous movie director. And also Alaska, who is the singer that they quote at every single, at the end of every single episode saying, ¿A quién le importa lo que yo haga? Well, yes. The runway category was three in one. If you remember last season, they asked uh, to do a look that was like two in one, which was, which was already difficult. But this year they decided to do three looks in one and you cannot like remove the clothing to reveal into a different clothing. They all had to be like stuck together without like throwing too many elements out, which is crazy. It is so so difficult for the queens to shine with such like narrow indications of what they have to do. This is a very, very, very difficult concept to elaborate. The musical in general was amazing. Uh, everyone performed very, very well, but a lot of people are having problems with the judges this season me included, but I'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the video. So we're gonna go one by one. Let's start with the two main characters. We can say Clover was Doro and Pinchadora was Thea. Instead of having one Dorothy, they divided the character of Dorothy in two. Clover did a very good job in the challenge. I really don't understand what the judges said. She was wearing like the 80s Movida clothing. I felt very cringy about the white powder stain right under the nose. I did not like that. I was like cringing the whole time. But well, it was her decision. There were a couple mentions about that in the musical, so... And her runway was inspired in the Bratz dolls. So she comes out with this pink furry look. I love the hair with the little doll heads. She reveals into this black, beautiful thing with the wings. The reveal was inside the wings. And then she takes that off and it transforms into a beautiful, like, cheetah print, Bratz doll came to life. Cool. It was cute. The reveal was cute. The look was cute. But what did the judges think about Clover? They thought that being a dancer especially, she wasn't shining enough. Like, they thought, which is not true, that she was kind of, like, demure because the people that she had around weren't dancers, so she didn't want to, like, she was trying to make it all more equal. But that's not at all. Like, you could have said many things about Clover. Clover does have one specific problem when she's acting, that she doesn't understand the rhythm and she doesn't understand tone very well. So she makes like stops in weird places. It feels like it's red and it doesn't feel super, super natural, but she was able to do it very convincingly. And about the tone, sometimes she says things in a way that are like a little bit of a caricature, but she doesn't have the same caricature in every single line. It's like she studies one line with one tone and another line with another tone, but it really doesn't come all together. But the critique that they said that she was trying to like go not so much as a diva in order for it to feel unified and wherever makes absolutely no sense, especially because if you remember the dancing challenge, Clover didn't win and she was very clearly the best. So when she does what the judges were asking, she doesn't win either. And even when people do what the judges were critiquing about Clover, they send them home. Like Chuchi, for example, in that dancing challenge in episode two, they critiqued that Chuchi was too much and the other ones were a little bit too like in the background. And it's like, I'm okay with the judges having whichever opinion, 
I understand that my opinions are not universal and I am not in the control of the whole truth of the universe, but you have to make the critiques consistent. And if you're not going to make the critiques consistent, you have to edit the episode in a way where we think the same thing that you are saying. Because the way that the episode was edited and what we saw has absolutely nothing to do with what the judges are seeing. So I don't know if it's the translation between like filming and editing and the things that are lost in the editing. I don't know if the judges personally like feel more moved by one thing and less moved by other thing. I don't know if they just want very cool lip syncs with certain people so they know that they're going to have good lip syncs this year. I don't know what the motivation behind all of this is, but when you heard like, Clover was as confused as I am, and I think she thought the same thing. And all the girls, if you open Twitter, it's fuming. All the girls thought basically the same thing. There, if you want to critique things from Clover, critique the things that make a little bit more sense. So in the result, with the challenge, with the look, Clover Bish is in the bottom. In my opinion, it makes no sense. The other half of that pair was Pinchadora playing Thea. In the Rusical, I felt like she deserved Clover's critiques. I love Pinchadora, I admire her very much, but it is true that you do not control what the roles say and that for me, she faded a little bit into the background. I don't know why, but for me, Clover was a character that was a lot larger, a lot bigger and a lot cleaner that Pinchadora's character. For the runway, she decided to go in a very funny, comfy route and she had a day in the life of Belén Esteban. I've explained Belén Esteban before. She's one of the big staples of, of our like tabloid TV. She was Arancha Castilla La Mancha's Snatch Game in season one, if you remember that. And there have been like several mentions about this woman. She was the girlfriend of a bullfighter and then became famous that way. But she, since she was like very vulgar, she became like very, very, very famous. And then she is like a tabloid host journalist and all these like spicy celebrity gossips, TV shows that we have in Spain, which are daily because it's something that's huge in Spain. She's been on like, celebrity big brother she has been on tv every single day for the past like 20 something years so pinchadera starts with her iconic pajama look uh which is the pajama that she used when she went to big brother so she you would see her in this pajama all the time then she reveals into like the businesswoman belen esteban because she's not only this like tabloid personality, she also has a company. She has potato chips, she has, she has gazpacho, she has salmorejo, and she is like a businesswoman. So Pinchadora reveals into this woman with an apron, looking more professional. She reveals the apron and, un and underneath it says, come del pollo, which means eat the chicken. That's because like the reporters caught her once screaming to her daughter to eat the chicken. And it's just like one of these famous forever taglines that you're going to have until you die. Comete el pollo, Andreita. And then she reveals into like fancy red car carpet, red carpet, you know, Belen Esteban with a pink gown. I think she had some like cheetah print in the pink. And yeah, this could be like from the front cover of one of our like celebrity gossip magazines, or it could, you know, like a very professional Belen Esteban. She has her hair done like Belen Esteban does, and this was very funny. With the critiques that she was given, she was safe. For me, and in my opinion, and I'm sorry because I love her, I personally would have put Pinchadora in the bottom. That doesn't say anything about herself as a drag queen. It just means that, you know, the roles are made to make certain people shine. And I don't think that the edit showed like a safe performance from Pinchadora, even though I really like the runway. 
Then we have the little group of three, instead of having like the lion, the scarecrow, and the tin man, we have the drag with no heart, the drag with no brain, and the coward drag, I guess. These roles, if you think about last year's musical, we had Las Musas as well, are easy to fade into the background because of the role and the character. They're just people that are there reacting to whatever is happening, but they don't get like a special time to shine usually. So we're gonna start with the first one, Paquita, like the coward. Um, it's obvious that the auditions were made for that. Um, they say that Paquita was fading into the background, that they were losing her, but they specifically gave her a role that was supposed to be a coward. You know that I am 100% biased with Paquita, but I think Paquita delivered what was asked from her. Uh, but it is true that that role was impossible to make into something amazing. It is very possible for like a very minimal role to make it into a winner. But if you're making a role that is supposed to be a coward, I don't think that you can do that role any better. Her runway look was this amazing yellow, small little dress, like with a little flamenco ruffles, but short, that reveals, the, the reveal was so, so, so clean, so beautiful. It just falls and it, she had to like turn around for it to fall. So it fell and it was like a classic flamenco dress silhouette. And then she opens that dress and it's like a superhero flamenco cape and she has this body on and all that. This look was very successful. What the judges said about her, she said that in the runway she shines, but in the challenge they lost her a bit. And I'm like, girl, Visa was talking about this in the Untucked very much. And I agree so much with Visa and I love her, her so much. Let's go with Visa then. Visa was the drag without a heart. She was supposed to be like the Tin Man, right? Her character as the drag with no heart, and they say that they lost the character, that they didn't understand the character, that it wasn't developed in a way that, well, I don't think she did a bad job. I think she did what needed to be done again. I think that whoever had that role was going to have the exact same problem. About the runway, there was a couple issues with the runway, but she started with this beautiful butterfly look inspired by this one by Moschino. Then she revealed into like a teal dress. She says it's inspired by like a toxic butterfly. I'm not sure if it's this one. I've been Googling, I have no idea. And then she reveals into the third look, which is like a monarch butterfly look inspired again by Moschino this inspiration. These looks were very good. The middle one didn't make a lot of sense between the two of them, but if you remember, uh, Bisa had a lot of things that weren't finished when she came and she were she was making them there. I don't know if she had an issue with that or she if she didn't understand the rules, but she takes the whole thing off to reveal into the third. And that was one of the rules of this runway. You cannot take things off. So with all of that, they say that Visa was in the bottom. Um, I understand that if she didn't follow the rules of the runway, she has to be in the bottom. But well, in general, I think she did a good job, to be honest. And the last of the like muses drags was Pitita, who was the like the drag without a brain. Okay, uh, this is hard because I really admire Pitita and I, I like her very much, but uh, here they said that she was amazing, she was a star, that the camera loved her, but um, she is playing again the same character that she played in the first mini challenge of the farm, that she played in the acting challenge with Drag Rec, even last week when she played Sara Montiel, she did basically the same thing of being like a stupid girl. It is the same character where they have put her like every single week. 
visa complaints about this in the Untucked. Like they ask some of them to get out of their comfort zone. They ask so much to some of them, but for other ones, it feels like this character was cherry picked for Pitita. And it feels that this character, whoever had had this character would have shined because it's a very easy character to make it shine, to make it funny. It was the comedic relief of the whole thing. She really didn't have to do much. I mean, she did a good job, but I think that it is a matter of which role you have or you haven't, which was chosen by production. It wasn't chosen by them, so it is okay for us to critique this, okay? The looks were very good, they were very cool. She started with this look. She had like a common theme that was like Spanish fashion, like Spanish designers. She started with this look by Valenciaga. Uh, Valenciaga was the first designer that broke with the concept of like corseted, tiny little waists and he started doing things with volume. So she was based in either, in like these two looks basically, I don't know if there's another reference, but basically. Then she reveals that dress into uh, Manuel Bertegaz. Bertegaz was another very famous designer and this look was based in this other look. And then she reveals into the third Spanish decider, designer, Paco Raban. No, Raban was not French. He was from Spain. Well, he was from Euskadi, who was also an architect. So the proportions and the silhouettes were very cool. These looks were super, super good. They had references. They made sense. She looked good. She know how to reveal into each other. They weren't like 100% perfect in everything, but they were like super good. And the judges decide that she is the winner this week. And you can, and we can agree with that or not, but she is, she did a good job. This look was amazing and she did what was asked from her. Then we have the witches. First we have Bania Vainilla as the good witch. Bania Vainilla, in my opinion, was the best in the show, in the musical. She is amazing. She has such a character and you can tell the confidence and how well she does it. But the runway was hideous. This was terrible. It was winter. After winter, it was fall. For some reason, after winter, you have fall. And then you have spring. And then you have summer. And it wasn't just that it was out of order. It was that the dresses were absolutely hideous. The last one was a little bit better, but you know, the execution, the reveals wasn't clean, the looks were hideous, and it was a terrible runway. But she was the best on, in the Brusical, in my opinion. So with all that taken into consideration, she was top, which I agree with. Then you have Bestia. Bestia also had an amazing, amazing role in the musical. She was the bad witch. She did a good job. She danced, she performed. She was the bad witch. Her looks, again, in my opinion, were hideous. She wanted to do something about like mental illness and mental health but this wasn't translated correctly. I really didn't enjoy this runway specifically from Bestia. So taking all that into consideration, they put her safe. And then last but not least, we have Ornella Gongora, who was playing like the Wizard of Oz, El Mago Precoz, like the premature wizard. And what the judges say is that they lose her some time and then you can see that she's in her mind sometimes, but then she can shine. And I didn't see her be inside of her head in the challenge. I thought that she did amazing. She also has a very nice control in stage. Her character was talking in lyrics of songs of from La Movida. So that's why it didn't make a lot of sense for you guys because she was just saying lyrics from very classic Movida songs, but I think that she did amazing in the challenge, to be honest. And again, it's another week where Bania and Ornella do amazing and, you know, but well. Her runway look was a little bit harsh. I love I loved the first one where she looked like a trash bag. Then she reveals into like this 
homeless chic couture. The judges say that she reminded them of Barragan, who is a, like a comedian here in Spain. And then she reveals into the third look, which is like all made of tiny little pieces of cloth. She makes like a gown. It's ugly and it's bulky. And the last look that you have under it all shouldn't be bulky, but I don't think it was her favorite look either, to be honest, but it was look, it was cool. It made sense. It was like the Pygmalion story. Ornella explains it like the Galatea syndrome. I don't know if that makes any sense in English. So it wasn't the most amazing one. It wasn't the worst one whatsoever. And taking all that into consideration, she was placed on top. So before we go into the results, let's talk about the intact because there's like construction workers under my window, but I hope you can hear me well enough because I'm not stopping. I have a lot of things to say. So let's go with the Untucked. Uh, they talk about many things. They say that I hope Clover is not in the bottom. They are talking about a bunch of things, but then Bisa starts talking about what we were saying, what the whole Twitter is saying, I think, that she doesn't think that they're asking for the same type of things from everyone, that the judges' critiques, there is no consistency and that they almost cherry pick certain characters to make people look good or look bad. And you guys remember that in the last episode, Pitita was talking some shit about Bisa, but behind her back. And I think Bisa here didn't even know that that happened. It was a surprise when she saw it on TV last week. So I don't think that she is just angry with Pitita for anything. So the judges decide that the winner is Pitita. She was not my choice for a winner, but I actually agree because uh, for me, my winner was Ornella this episode. But I, I understand that Pitita had a very good runway and Ornella's runway wasn't as impressive. The thing is that the consistency of the importance of the runway keeps changing. Some episodes they say, oh, but the runway isn't important. We should judge the maxi challenge over the runway. And then next episode, the runway is so important. And it's just about edit the episodes in a way that makes it consistent and understandable. Because making Pitita win when maybe there were other people that did it well. And yes, Pitita did a very, very good job. The problem is that when other people do a very, very good job, they don't say it, that was okay. It was beautiful. You're the best. I'm so excited about you because Clover did a very good job too. Bestia did a very good job too. Or Bella. Like they should have said, yeah, you were okay in the challenge. You had a character that suit you that suits you very well and you were able to shine and then your runway was amazing. That's why you're winner. That I would understand. The fact is that they are forgetting to explain or to have a consistent idea of how things should have been judged. And then for the bottom, I do understand that if you're breaking the rules and you're not following the rules of the runway, you should be on the bottom. So I understand that Visa's in the bottom, even though I love Visa so much. But the other one being Clover Bish, I do not agree. I haven't been explained why in a way that makes sense whatsoever, because we have all seen a lot of things about Clover Bish performance that maybe she could improve because she's new. She hasn't been acting for a long time, but those were not the issue. It was suddenly a different issue and it was the opposite that they told other people in the past. And it's like the same problem with inconsistency. Me personally, I do not think, I'm not the type of person that thinks that before the season they have like written down who goes home every single week and who is on the top every single week. I think that they have favorites, like the production, have people that they think are going to go like a lot further. And they have people that they think that are not going to go further. They have already seen all the looks that the queens bring. So they know kind of the girls that are going to do a good job but I don't think that they know who's going to go home every single week and that they're just justifying that. 
The thing is that if this was the judge's decision, then it was production responsibility to edit the episode in a way that that made sense. If this was production's decision, like Clover has to be in the bottom because we want an amazing lip sync, then it's the judge's responsibility to bring things, to have critiques that matched what they said other weeks, what they want to happen. You can justify the bottom placement of Clover. You could justify that editing in a certain way, but they didn't. And the problem is, I think this doesn't benefit anyone. I think that we have been watching Drag Race for three seasons. The other seasons, there was al there was also people that didn't stop winning. Carmen Farala was a very clear winner from day one. And Sharon was a very clear winner from day one too. But they made it obvious in the edit that they were the best. It's not like we don't like Pitita, we love Pitita. We want Pitita to win when she deserves it so people can root for her. But when she does a very good job and she wins and other queens like Ornella, like Paquita, like Vanya do a very good job and don't win or even in the bottom, it makes the viewer not to like Pitita. And Pitita is an amazing drag queen and she deserves to win every single time she is the best. And this week, she deserved to win if you explain it in the correct way. But this was not explained. Tell Ornella that her look is super ugly and that that is what makes her not win, but she was going to win. Tell her that. So that's my rant. I'm sorry. I needed to get that all out of my system. I feel a lot better now. A lot of people are coming for Pitita this episode just because she won. She is not responsible for winning. She did her best and the judges say, you win. So don't come for her. Don't go to her social media to say anything to her. Just leave her alone. She is not responsible for the judges' decisions. I want you guys to explain me down below in the comments how are you feeling the judging because twitter is on fire right now no one understands clover's bottom placement it's a pity that they didn't explain why pitita should have won i want to know your opinion because maybe i'm too biased and i want to know how it's all being understood everywhere else in the world so if you do speak Spanish, I cannot recommend you enough my friend Parodi Parada's channel because he's a designer and he understands very much about fashion, which I think will be very, very helpful this episode. If you want to hear someone that is an expert in makeup, go follow my friend Emily Ghost. Both of those channels are in Spanish. And of course, I know that you already know Maddie Rantz. Of course, if you're here, you know him. But if you want more information about Drag Race España in English, you can go follow him. Remember to listen to the podcast Exposed with Joseph Shepard. You know, every Wednesday we drop a new episode talking about Drag Race España. I hope you're liking that podcast. I'm having the best time with Joseph. I just love him so much. If you want to support my channel, you have my PayPal account down below. And remember that you also have a free way of supporting my channel, which is sharing this video, liking, subscribing, and saying nice things about me. You guys are the best, honestly. I know that I am quite opinionated and I am 100% biased all the time. And that sometimes what I say doesn't make a lot of sense for everyone. But, you know, I'm not the expert. I'm not the judge. I don't have to judge anyone. So I'm just here to have a kiki with you guys. So thank you all for watching. Next week we have the girls returning. So let's see who comes back to the competition. I'm rooting for Visa, to be honest. If you haven't seen Visa talking about Pitita last week, Pitita talking shit about her, about Visa behind her back in Untucked. Visa responded like a very long thing in her Instagram stories. And I have taken the time to translate the whole thing in English. So if you want to see what Lisa said about Pitita, the link to the translation in English of that will be down below. My computer is still not working, but I was able to like get some money together to buy a new one. So if you want to help with that, I truly appreciate it. And that's all for today. Stay queer. I love you. Bye bye.